And Moshe said, Hero Yisrael, Yahweh your Elohim, Yahweh is one, and you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your might. And these words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart. You shall impress them upon your children. You shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way. When you lie down and when you rise up, and shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom to everyone worshiping with us at home. Uh, it's a privilege to have you folks join us today. And um, the name of the message today is called, Don't You Want to Make the Devil Glad? Now, how many, how many of us here want to make the devil glad? Well, boy, I sure do. You, you, you don't want to make the devil glad? Maybe I'm preaching to the wrong crowd. You, you, you don't want to make the devil glad. Well, why not? Don't you want to be like Peter or, or, or James and John or, or any, any of the other apostles? Or, or, or John the Baptist, Yochanan the Immerser? Or how about Hezekiah or, or Josiah or, or uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel? Or, or let's say Joshua. Or, or, or any of a bunch of folks like that that record, are recorded in the Scripture, they live the kind of life that would make the devil glad. And if you want to make the devil glad, then those would be some, some good folks to look at to see how to do it. Why am I getting these looks? <laughs> we remember when you tricked us. Mm. Here, turn, turn with me to... Matthew chapter 4, because Yahshua would be our best example. I mean, and I remind you that this is what happened to Yahshua right after his immersion in the Jordan River. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. We're going to start reading in verse 1, and we're going to be on page 919 and the 98. ISR. Mm. Matthew 4, verse 1. <clears throat> then Yahshua was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tried by the devil. And after having fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. So Yahshua was already in a compromised state, right? Verse 3. And the trier came and said to him, If you are the son of Elohim, command these stones to become bread. So, what does Yahshua do? He quotes the word of Yahweh to the devil. Verse 4. But he answered and said, It has been written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of Yahweh. So, the devil tries a little scripture quoting of his own. Then the devil took him up into the set-apart city, set him on the edge of the set-apart place, and said to him, If you are the son of Elohim, throw yourself down, for it has been written, He shall command his messengers concerning you, and in their hand they shall bear you up, so that you do not dash your foot against a stone. And Yahshua said to him, It has also been written, You shall not try Yahweh your Elohim. Uh, again the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the reins of the world in their esteem and said to him, All these I give to you if you fall down and worship me. And then Yahshua said to him, Go, Satan, for it has been written, You shall worship Yahweh your Elohim, and him alone you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and see, the messengers came and attended to him. You see, that's what I'm talking about right there. It says, you don't have to turn here, but 1 John 2, 6 says, The one who says he stays in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Now, if you can keep that up, there is a high likelihood that you will eventually make the devil glad. Poor Stan. 
he has finally flipped all the way out. Nope, just, just wait. You see, when Satan comes at you throwing all kinds of temptation and twisting the word, don't do like the woman in the garden and give in to your own desires. But do like Yahshua did in the wilderness and stand firm on the word of Yahweh even in your weakened state. See, this is a tremendous example that Yahshua has given us. And, you know, Peter actually demonstrates the, the, the same thing that, that Yahshua modeled for us in his first letter. Let's turn to, to 1 Peter chapter 5. That's going to be Kepha, 1 Kepha chapter 5. We're going to be on page 1181 in the ISR, the 98. First Peter chapter 5. We're going to start reading in verse 1. Therefore, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Messiah and also a sharer of the esteem that is to be revealed, I appeal to the elders among you. Shepherd the flock of Elohim, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but voluntarily, not out of greed or filthy gain, but eagerly, neither as being masters over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you shall receive the never-fading crown of esteem. In the same way, you younger ones, be subject to elders, and gird yourselves with humility towards one another. For Elohim resists the proud, but gives favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, then, under the mighty hand of Elohim, so that he exalts you in due time, casting all your worry upon him. For he is concerned about you. Now watch this next part and see how it exemplifies the, the same type of thing that Yahshua went, uh, went through when he was in the wilderness. All right? Verse 8. Be sober and watch because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Was he doing that to Yahshua? Yep, he sure was. Verse 9, resist him firm in the belief. Is that what Yahshua did? Yes, it is. Knowing that the same hardships or experienced by your brotherhood in the world, and the Elohim of all favor who calls you to his everlasting esteem by Messiah Yahshua, after you have suffered a while, himself perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Is that, that not the same thing that happened to Yahshua? And the messengers came and attended him. Right? Well, what's that got to do with making the devil glad, Stan? Well, it, it says in Hebrews 9, 27, And as it awaits men to die once, and after this the judgment, right? And Ecclesiastes also tells us that uh, there is a time to be born and a time to die. All right? And unless Yahshua returns first, we are all going to die eventually. I hope that in my life I have been such an adversary to the devil that in my passing he will say, I'm glad that I don't have to deal with that one anymore. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, it would. Yeah. That now, now, don't you want to make the devil glad? <laughs> you do. It's still hard to say, though, isn't it? No. I don't mean make him glad about doing his bidding. I'm talking about being glad that you're not standing in his way and not having to fight you anymore because of the great resistance with which you resisted him. All right. And that's why we need to put on the complete armor of Elohim if we want to make the devil glad. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to be on page 1136, 1136 in the 98 ISR. Ephesians 
6, we're going to start reading in verse 10. For the rest, my brothers, be strong in the Master and in the mightiness of His strength. Put on the complete armor of Elohim for you to have power to stand against the schemes of what? The devil. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against authorities, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual matters of wickedness in the heavenlies. Because of this, take up the complete armor of Elohim so that you have power to withstand in the wicked day, and having done all to stand, stand then, having girded your waist with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having fitted your feet with the preparation of the good news of peace. Above all, having taken up the shield of belief with which you shall have power to quench all the burning arrows of the wicked one. Take also the helmet of deliverance and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Elohim, praying at all times with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching uh, in all perseverance and supplication for all the set-apart ones. That's the way that Yahshua was fitted, and that is the way we need to do if we're going to stand against the schemes of the devil. And having done all to stand, stand then. This is a real war, and it is life and death. It's, it's everlasting life and everlasting death. And, and I hope that I can be a, such an impediment to his progress, the devil that is, that he will be glad when he doesn't have to deal with me anymore. Now, there are multiple battlegrounds, too, on which we have to fight. Some are external. Some are interpersonal. Some are, some are very personal. And some are fought within, that's right, Matt, within our minds. And Satan operates on many fronts. So being a great Satan to the great Satan is a 24-7 job, and it can be exhausting at times. Did you know that the first time that the word Satan, Satan, Satan is used in the scripture, that it's not talking about the devil, but rather it's, it's referring to the messenger of Yahweh. Did you know that? You most likely won't see this in your English translations, but, but do you remember when Bilaam's donkey started talking to him? Let's, let's turn there, Numbers 22. Numbers 22. I'm going to start reading in verse 21, so we're going to be on 166 in the 98 ISR. Some people are going to be familiar with calling him Balaam, but... It says in verse, uh, Numbers 22, verse 21. And Bilam rose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the heads of Moab. But the displeasure of who? Elohim. The display, but the displeasure of Elohim burned, against, uh, burned because he went, and the messenger of Yahweh stationed himself in the way as you see that where it says, an adversary against him. And he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Right? Where it says, an adversary, that word is Satan. Satan. And it's referring to the messenger of Yahweh. So, if the messenger of Yahweh can be a Satan, an adversary, to his enemies, then you can be La Satan to Hasatan. You see that? As a matter of fact, we need to be. We must be. 
We must be. Now, take a look at this, what we're going to read here, and, and see if this looks like any of the battlegrounds that you recognize. Is this the kind of stuff that we, we see today? See, there's, there's really nothing new under the sun. And, 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 and these are really easy to spot. Look with me in Isaiah 59. Yeshayahu 59. We're going to start reading in verse 1, be on page 459. Isaiah 59, verse 1. Look, the hand of Yahweh has not become too short to save, nor his ear too heavy to hear, but your crookednesses have separated you from your Elohim, and your sins have hidden his face from you from hearing. For your hands have been defiled with blood and your fingers with crookedness. Your lips have spoken falsehood. Your tongue mutters unrighteousness. No one calls for righteousness. Boy, we see that a lot, don't we? No one calls for righteousness. No, and no one pleads for truth. They trust in emptiness and speak worthlessness. They conceive trouble and bring forth wickedness. They have hatched adder's eggs, and they weave the spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs dies, and when one is broken, an adder is hatched. Their webs do not become garments, nor do they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of wickedness, and a deed of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they hurry to shed innocent blood. You, you ever heard of Planned Parenthood? Their thoughts are thoughts of wickedness. Wasting and ruin are in their highways. The way of peace they have not known, and there is no right ruling in their ways. They have made crooked paths for themselves. Whoever treads in them shall not know peace. Therefore, right ruling has been far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but there is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in thick darkness. We feel for the wall like the blind, and we feel as without eyes. At noon we stumble as at twilight in deserted places like the dead. All of us growl like bears and moan sadly like doves. We look for right ruling, but there is none. For deliverance, but it is far from us. For our transgressions have increased before you, and our sins witnessed against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for... Our crookedness, we know them. Transgressing and being untrue to Yahweh and turning away from our Elohim, speaking oppression and apostasy, conceiving and pondering words of falsehood from the heart. And right ruling is driven back. Boy, isn't that the truth? Right ruling is driven back and righteousness stands far off for truth has fallen in the street and right and is unable to enter. And the truth is lacking, and whoever turns away from evil makes himself a prey. Huh. And Yahweh saw, and it displeased him, that there was no right ruling. And he saw that there was no man, and was astonished that there was no intercessor. So his own arms saved for him, and his righteousness upheld him. Now, check out the armor of Elohim here. And he put on righteousness as a breastplate. And a helmet of deliverance was on his head, and he put on garments of vengeance for clothing, and wrapped himself with ardor as a mantle. According to their deeds, so he repays wrath to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. He repays recompense to the coastlands, and they shall fear the name of Yahweh from the west, and his esteem from the rising of the sun, when he comes like a distressing stream with the, which the spirit of Yahweh drives on. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and to those turning from transgression in Yaakov, declares Yahweh. As for me, watch this, this is my covenant with them, said Yahweh. My spirit that is upon you, look at this, and my words that I have put in your mouth shall not be withdrawn from your mouth, nor the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants, descendants, said Yahweh, from this time and forever. 
All right? Now, if you're, if you're coming up with all kinds of excuses why you don't have to keep this command or you don't have to keep that command, you might want to examine yourself to see which side you're actually fighting for because according to what we just read, if you don't have his word in your mouth, you aren't in Yahweh's covenant. Amen? Amen. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. We're going to be on page 1186. 1 John chapter 3, we're going to start reading in verse 4. Everyone doing sin also does lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Everyone staying in him does not sin. Everyone sinning has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one lead you astray. The one doing righteousness is righteousness. I'm sorry, is righteous, even as he is righteous. The one doing sin is of the devil. Because the devil has sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of Elohim was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Everyone having been born of Elohim does not sin because his seed stays in him and he is powerless to sin because he has been born of Elohim. Did you see that? Yahshua, the reason that it says why Yahshua was manifested was to destroy the works of the devil. Alright? And if and if we walk like Yahshua, we will do likewise and be la Satan to ha Satan. And I'd like to take a look at two things from Paul's writings today. Uh, turn, turn back to Ephesians chapter 4. Turn back to Ephesians chapter 4. We were in six a while ago. Ephesians 4, page 11, 34. We're going to start reading in verse 17. So, this I say, and witness in the Master, that you should no longer walk as the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. Having been darkened in their understanding, Having been estranged from the life of Elohim because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart, who have become, having become callous, have given themselves up to indecency to work all uncleanliness with greediness. But you have not so learned Messiah, if indeed you have heard him and were taught by him, as truth is in Yahshua, that you put off with regard to your former way of life, the old man being corrupted according to the desires of the deceit and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the renewed man which was created according to Elohim in righteousness and set apartness of the truth. Therefore, having put off the faults, speak truth each one with his neighbor for we are members of one another. Be wroth, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your rage. Look at this. Nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, so that he has somewhat to share with those in need. Let no one, no, I'm sorry, let no corrupt word come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for the use of building up, so as to impart what is pleasant to the hearers. And do not grieve the set-apart spirit of Elohim by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and displeasure and uproar and slander be put away from you among, along with all evil. And be kind towards one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as Elohim also forgave you in Messiah. Okay, now... 
So we don't want to give place to the devil, and we want to turn from our old ways. But one of the things that we need to look at here, too, is, is that we don't all have the same gifts. But we are many members of the same body fighting against the same adversary, against the same Satan. And just like in, in, in military battles, you see people with all sorts of different duties. You know, you see some people running reconnaissance. Uh, 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 some people are, are, are fighting on the front lines. Some people are uh, doing intelligence. Uh, some, some are uh, resupplying. There's, there's all kinds of things that go on in a, uh, uh, a military campaign. And I'd like to take a look at, at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to start reading in verse 1, which is on page 1111. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. And concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not wish you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles led away to the dumb idols, even as you might be led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of Elohim says Yahshua is a curse. And no one is able to say that Yahshua is master except by the set-apart Spirit. And there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are different kinds of service, but the same Master. And there are different kinds of workings, but the same Elohim is working all in all. And to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for profiting. For to one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another a word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. And to another belief by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, and to another operations of powers, and to another prophecy, and to another discerning spirits, and to another kinds of tongues into another interpretation of tongues. But one in the same spirit works all these, distributing to each one individually as he intends. Look at this. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is the Messiah. For indeed by one spirit, you were all immersed into one body, whether Yehudim or Greeks, whether slaves, free, whether slaves or free. And we are all made to drink into one spirit. For indeed the body is not one member but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, does it therefore not belong to the body? And if the ear says, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, does it therefore not belong to the body? If all the body was an eye, where would be the hearing? If all hearing, where would be the smelling? But now Elohim has set the members, each one of them, in the body, even as he pleased. You see that? What, whatever your gift is, is what has pleased Elohim to give you and to put you in the body. Verse 19, and, and if they all had been one member, where would the body be? And now there are indeed many members but one body. And an eye is unable to say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again to the head, to the feet, I have no need of you. But much rather those members of the body which are thought to be weaker are necessary and to those of the body which we think to be less respected, these we present greater respect. And our unseemly members have greater seemliness, whereas our seemly members have no need. But Elohim blended together the body, having given greater respect to the member which lacks it, that there should be no division in the body, but that the members should have the same concern one for another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is esteemed, all the members rejoice with it. And you are a body of Messiah and members individually. 
And Elohim has appointed these in the assembly. Firstly, emissaries. Secondly, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing. Helps, ministrations, kinds of tongues. Are all emissaries? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly seek the better gifts, and I show you a more excellent way. 13 verse 1. If I speak with the tongues of men and of messengers, but do not have love, I have become as a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophecy, know all secrets and all knowledge, and if I have all belief so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I'm none at all. And if I give out all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I give my body to be burned, but do not have love, I am not profited at all. Love is patient, is kind. Love does not envy, love does not boast, is not puffed up, does not behave indecently, does not seek its own, is not provoked, reckons not the evil, does not rejoice over the unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It covers all, believes all, expects all, endures all. Love never fails, and whether there be prophecies, they shall be inactive, or tongues, they shall cease, or knowledge, it shall be inactive. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be inactive. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought as a child. I reasoned as a child, but when I became a man, I did away with childish matters. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know, as I also have been known. And now belief, expectation, and love remain these three, but the greatest of these is love. And this is how we hold together, and this is how we fight as a unit. You know, that's, that's why this adversary, the devil, is, is always looking for opportunities to tear up the congregations, where, wherever they are, and put enmity in there. And if we'll do what we just read, that will make it a lot harder on the, uh, on the old devil and uh, it will help us go a long way. James chapter 4, Jacob chapter 4. We'll start reading in verse 1 on page 1176. James chapter 4, verse 1. See, this is the kind of stuff that, that the devil likes to do to the congregations. Where do fightings and strivings come from among you? Do they not come from your pleasures that battle in your members? You desire and do not have. You murder and are jealous and are unable to obtain. You strive and fight and you do not possess because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask evilly in order to spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with Elohim? Whoever therefore intends to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of Elohim. Or do you think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? Does the spirit which dwells in us intensely crave unto envy? But he gives greater favor because of this, he says, Elohim resists the proud, but gives favor to the humble. Look here. So then, subject yourselves to Elohim, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. Draw near to Elohim, and he shall draw near to you. Cleanse hands, sinners, and cleanse the hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to dejection. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Master, and He shall lift you up. Look at verses 7 and 8 again. 
So then subject yourselves to Elohim, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. Draw near to Elohim, and he shall draw near to you. Cleanse hands, sinners, and cleanse the hearts, you double-minded. That's, that's some good advice right there. Amen. Amen. As I mentioned before, it's appointed unto man once to die. And we're not getting out of this alive. We're all going to pass unless the master comes first. When one of those who, who uh, does not stand against the devil dies, it's nothing to him, the devil. It's nothing to him. That one has been a useful fool, and there is an abundance of useful fools. You know, and, and I was going to say useful idiots. Uh, that's a term that gets used, useful idiots. And, and the reason I chose to, to say useful fools is because the Scripture is rife of, with the definitions of what a fool and foolishness is. And, and a, a fool is someone who practices unrighteousness. Wisdom is walking in righteousness. Foolishness is walking in unrighteousness. And, and there is an abundance of useful fools for the devil to use, right? But then, there are those who are tremendous thorns in his backside, and I want to be one of those. Amen? I hope that in my life I have been such an adversary to the devil that at my passing, the devil will say, I am glad I don't have to deal with that one anymore. Yep. In that way, I want to make the devil glad. How about you? How about you at home? Don't you want to make the devil glad too? Because you see, if I can make the devil glad that he doesn't have to deal with me anymore, then just maybe I'll get to hear. Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You were trustworthy over a little. I shall set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Hallelujah. Yevrekeka Yahweh ba Ishmareka Yaer Yahweh Panavaleka Bikoneka Yasa Yahweh Panavaleka Biasim Laka Shalom. Yahweh bless you and guard you. Yahweh make his face to shine upon you and show favor to you. Yahweh lift up his face upon you and give you his complete contentment.